Hello, my name is Matt Brook. I am co-founder and lead developer of Remuse. A little bit about myself, as well as being a software engineer, I am also a studio engineer. And here we are at the lovely Mayfield studio where I spend a hell of a lot of my time. I engineer on all kinds of sessions, but something that really drives my passion is recording and mixing drums. This is gonna be a really impromptu video because I've just finished the session and I've just realized it's an amazing opportunity to show off some of the really cool stuff that Remuse Kit can help out with that you could just never do before. So without further ado, let's dive in. I have my session open here, as you can see, and this is a four-piece rock band. And we wanted to showcase what the band is like live, so we tracked everyone together. And if you've ever engineered in a session like this before, you'll understand why this is a challenge for a few reasons. We have a really nice sounding live room at Mayfield, but it's not the biggest room in the world. And so when you have a really loud rock band all in close proximity to one another, you're going to find quite a lot of crosstalk between the different mics in the room. And there are a couple of ways around this. You can put acoustic treatment in between everyone who's in the room, but we were filming as well. So we wanted to have everyone just in the room as they would be. So that means we wanted the sound of their amps in the room and we wanted everyone kind of together as they would be at a gig so they can interact with each other and uh, give some energy to the video. Anyway, point being, there is some bleed in the mics. Now let's have a look at our drum kit, which is what we're here for. Uh, we have a fairly minimal setup here. Uh, it's just nine mics. We have kick, snare, hi-hat, tom, 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 overhead left, overhead right, and room. So let's have a listen, shall we? So yeah, uh, we've got quite a lot of bleed coming through from the guitars there, you can probably hear. What you're hearing is probably mostly going to be from the overheads in the room mic, so let's actually solo those off so we can have a quick listen. Yeah, I mean there's yeah, tons of guitar there. Which is not the end of the world, but if you want any kind of fine control over different elements, especially if you want to use Remuse Kit to de-bleed and to split out image mics into usable stems, this can be an issue because the bleed is kind of baked into the sound, right? Um, which is not what we want. And of course, on top of that, we have all the usual bleed issues like loads of hi-hat in the snare mic, although that's not a major issue on this particular recording. Let's have a listen. But it's still there, and again, if you want super fine control over all your kit elements, you might run into issues when you want to boost the top end, etc., etc. So let's work out what we actually want to do here. Hi hat mic, we just want the hi hat out of that, so cymbals will do. Kick is a kick. Overheads for this one, I think I just want the cymbals separated from the shells, so we're going to put it onto cymbals mode. Room mic, I do want to split out into kick, snare, and cymbals because I didn't set up a kick out mic, and normally I would do that if we were recording drums separately, but because it was quite a short session, I thought. Or let's go minimal and we can use the room mic as our kick out microphone as long as we can effectively split the kick out from that microphone which we can do with room use kit so we're going to take the room mic and yeah it's an image mic um, snare is snare and toms are toms now this is a feature that is super cool and i'm really personally excited about if you go into the settings menu of room use kit there is an option here to pre-isolate stems before splitting so if we select that and we go back what that will do is before it does any kind of splitting of individual elements from the kit it will run it through a kind of pre-processing phase where it removes everything that's not drums from the microphones before you even start, which means that we should have clean drum recordings before we start doing anything else with them, which is exactly what we need in this situation because we have a load of bleed in the mics from guitars and other stuff. So, now we've selected that, let's hit go and see what we get back. Okay, nice one. So I've done some tidying. Have a look at the session. This is our new folder for our kit. And now we have 11 channels that we're using instead of the nine that we started with. And I'll run you through what we've done here. So we've got our kick in we now have our kick out that we've extracted from the room mic we have our hi-hat with only the symbols in it now um, we have our snare from the microphone we set up we also have a snare from the room mic we now have all of our isolated toms I've chosen not to use the toms from the room mic and the cymbals from the room mic for this particular mix. And we split out the overheads into shells and cymbals. Okay, before we listen to any individual stems, let's have a listen to our original kit folder. So even before any drums come in, you can hear a little bit of tapping on the hi-hat, but mainly there is a ton of guitar in those image mics. So now let's listen to our processed kit. So 
So literally all you can hear there is the drummer's feet in preparation to rock out. So you've got a bit of stepping on the hi-hat and you've got a bit of stepping on the kick, but everything else is gone. So we've got what we want, which is just to focus on the drums rather than having to deal with anything else once we start actually mixing this. So let's do a couple of comparisons. Let's listen to the kick drum from the original kit. So pretty well isolated, but you can hear some snare and some other stuff coming through. Let's have a listen to our processed kick drum. Much cleaner, you're only getting the kick drum there, which is exactly what we want. Now let's have a listen to the kick drum that we extracted from the room mic. Again, really clean, and bear in mind there wasn't just a full drum kit in that room mic. There was also guitars, there was vocal, there was all kinds of stuff in there. And that's cleaned that out, and now we're literally getting just the nice round body of the kick drum. So it's actually completely saved me a job. I never had to set up a kick out microphone. I could have done, and we could have just run that through Rumi's kit as well. But on this particular job, time is of the essence, so this has worked perfectly for my purposes. So same story for the hi-hat, let's have a listen. Yep, nothing else to have to contend with there. So let's listen to the isolated snare mic on its own. Probably needs a little bit of fine tuning. I would probably gate that so we just get the snap of the snare. The problem is that you lose out on the sustain and body of the actual drum itself. So it's really cool now that we have the snare that we split out from the room mic because if we listen to them both together, We're just gonna have some really nice options to be able to get the snap that we want out of that microphone, but also give it the body like it's actually in the room, which is what we're trying to do with this particular recording. So I personally really love using Remuse Kit to split out the overheads into shells and cymbals, because then I have individual control over my cymbals, but also the snap and feel of the kit. So let's have a listen. So just the shells. There's a ton of really useful stuff in there. Obviously you could split that out further if you wanted to, but for this particular mix, I'm really happy with that. So let's listen to a little clip of the whole kit from a bit later in the song. So obviously completely unmixed as of yet, but the point is, it's as if the drums were just on their own in the room. So you've got the flexibility to push and pull your mix to your heart's desire without worrying about phasing issues or level creep when you're starting to mix other things in the track. So yeah, I just think it's a really cool new way of thinking about engineering drums because all these limitations that used to exist because of the physical world we live in don't matter anymore. So it's really freeing actually because it takes all these worries away and it just lets you focus on all these cool creative decisions that you could make in the mix. Or as I said, even when you're setting up the mics, you can think about that in a different way because you don't have to think things like, oh, I can't put that mic there because it's too close to that guitar cab. So yeah, I just wanted to show that off because I find it really cool personally. I'm really excited to see what other engineers think about this and how it could potentially potentially change their entire engineering workflow. So hopefully you found this impromptu video interesting. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching. See you in the next one. <laughs>